Hi there, happy Christmas. Welcome to Stir Crazy. My name is Patrick Fogarty and I'm going to be your host for the evening in this tropical Christmas cocktail masterclass. So I'm here at my little beach bar home. Uh, this bar is called Halulu. Uh, it's based in Timworth on the southwest coast of England and we're here to make you some terrific uh, tropical cocktails from all over the, uh, the East Asia and everywhere and the tropics. So uh, we've got some lovely drinks for you today. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through exactly what you have in your box. So you should have all received a small box with a load of drinks elements in it and these are how we're going to make all your drinks. So there's cocktails for four drinks in this. Two ready to drink and two that we will make up and we'll talk to you through all of them. As it goes through, I'm going to take you through step by step exactly what's in every single drink. So you'll know from scratch what it is. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just sort of say uh, what's in your box, basically. So the first thing we have are there are four little bottles in here, which are marked one, two, three and four. So the first uh, two is for uh, one of our drinks, which we'll make ourselves, bottles one and two. We will then have three and four go together. And then we have two pouches, which is our ready to drink cocktails. So the ready to drink cocktails are marked five and six. So really easy to do that. Um, also in there, you will find there is a little tin of soda water. So that is for one of the cocktails. And I'll show you how to use that bit later. The other things you, you'll have is a little bag like this. And this is your garnish bag. And so in the garnish bag, you will have vegan marshmallows. So we chose vegan marshmallows just because uh, I've never tried them and uh, veganism is growing in popularity. However, it was easier for us to choose one that we put into all the boxes and uh, that way no one's left out. So uh, the other things we have is a dehydrated pineapple slice, some dehydrated plums and also a little stir crazy wafer. So those are your garnishes. The last bit we'll also have there is a little pick to uh, toast your marshmallow on. So that is in essence what's in the box. And so there will also be a card in there which has a uh, little explanation and instructions on how to make each drink. So that should be everything that's in there. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is just sort of show you as well what glassware we need first. So I've got the glassware in front of me and this is the glassware and the order I'm gonna do these drinks. So the first drink is going to be in a rocks glass like this or tumbler glass um, and with this one this is going to be for our jingle bird um, and then the second one is a highball glass so a tall slender glass is a highball glass. Um, the third one again in a highball glass we're going to be doing that again and then the last drink will be in a coupe. So, uh, so four glassware today and uh, the other thing we're going to need is ice, lots of ice. So if you haven't already got it, run off, grab all your ice from the freezer uh, and bring it out and because we'll use quite a bit of ice in these drinks, both in shaking some of them but also stirring them and doing other bits as well. So um, I'm going to put those to one side for now. Um, the first drink we're going to be doing is uh, a drink called a, it's called the Jingle Bird. But before that as well, I'm just going to go through another little bit of equipment that you can use as well. So if you have a cocktail shaker, then grab that because we'll need that for one of the drinks at the end. Um, I've got a two part one here, tin on tin. Some of them are tin and glass, a Boston shaker, some have a cap on the top. Uh, made out of all things, but essentially it's a sealable container. So if you've got Tupperware or anything like that, that will do perfectly for it just as well. Or a sealed jar, anything that you can form a nice tight seal on, give it a really good shake to get lots of air into it and chill it down. So that's uh, what we need for the shaker wise. Um, having a good strainer is really good as well. If you don't have a cocktail strainer like this, a little fine sieve that you use like for straining out tea and stuff like that will work just as well. Um, other things we're going to be using is a stirring spoon. So I've got uh, a nice cocktail stirring spoon. If you don't have one of these fancy spoons, uh, which a lot of people don't, a chopstick or a skewer, anything that you can just get in there and just move it around in a glass. The other thing I'm doing is I've got a little beaker here, which I'm going to be stirring in. Um, I did have a really nice crystal uh, uh, one of these and it got dropped on the way here. So uh, I'm having to make do with a nice little uh, beaker that we use in our lab uh, where we make a lot of these drinks up. 
And uh, so those are kind of things we need. And then the other bit we've got here is I've got a Lewis bag and mallet, but if you've got a tea towel and a rolling pin, it does just as well. So nice clean tea towel like that and a rolling pin. And this is just to crush up ice for one of our drinks a bit later. Um, so those are that's the equipment we need. Uh, the last thing we need is some ice. So I've got a nice big load of cubed ice here. Um, if you've got crushed ice in your ice machine, brilliant, you won't need a rolling pin. You can just take it out of your, uh, your fancy fridge and just put it into that and it'll be brilliant as well. So I've got some crushed ice, but I've also got some big block ice and cube ice as well, uh, just for the drinks as well when I'm making them. We love big ice in the industry and uh, ice is super important. It's that one ingredient that's in every cocktail pretty much and is so important. So we generally use big clear ice wherever possible because it doesn't melt very quickly. It's got a beautiful appearance because it's crystal clear. And uh, so we tend to use that a lot. And uh, yeah, for that reason. Um, so without much ado, I'm gonna get on with our first drink. So I know you're all thirsty. So uh, the first drink we've got is called the Jingle Bird. And so this one is really, really simple. So we're gonna take pouch number five and just pour it over ice. Um, I'm gonna make this from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using a nice big ice cube here. I'm just gonna pop that in my glass. Uh, as you can see, it's like nice and clear that ice cube as well. So it's frosted at the moment. But as I said, we like using big ice cubes in the industry because it, chills but it doesn't add dilution. So more ice is actually one of these counterintuitive things where having more ice in your glass actually dilutes the drink less because the ice brings it down to temperature and uh, gets it to a really cold temperature and then stops dilution. And so it stops everything melting because it's got to zero. So if you have less ice, you generally it will become slushier and more dilute and a bit watery. So more ice is one of these things. That's why when you have Coca-Cola, they recommend three quarters of big cubes of ice uh, in a glass, three quarters of a glass of it. And the same applies for cocktails. So uh, the first drink, as I said, it's called a Jingle Bird. And so this is actually based on a drink called the Crystal Bird. And, uh, it's a really good drink. And uh, it originated from a bar, which was the Kuala Lumpur Hilton. And uh, it was invented in the 1970s. And it's kind of a tiki drink. So it's that tropical drink, but it kind of nods its head towards the Negroni cocktail with Campari in, in there. So, but it's a rum based one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a lashing of plantation rum in there. So, what we've got in this drink is essentially 30 milliliters of plantation rum. Now I'm using the plantation pineapple in this one and uh, we've used plantation pineapple and plantation three star in your one as well. Um, if you want a really good Christmas present, get a bottle of this, it's sensational stuff. Um, plantation is made by a company called Maison France. Um, they are a cognac producer in France and they make outstanding cognacs, one of the oldest cognac producers. They also produce rums from the Caribbean and all over from Fiji and everywhere. And they are absolutely sensational. And uh, always got a bottle at home and it's just brilliant stuff. Um, the next thing I'm gonna put in here is 10 milliliters of uh, Campari. So Campari is a bitter orange aperitif from Italy. Um, most commonly used in a Negroni cocktail. So most people know that. It is quite bitter and quite astringent. So, Usually with a jungle bird, which this is based on, uh, we would uh, just use Campari, but I'm going to bounce it out a little bit more with a much softer aperitivo, which is called Aperol. And this again, another Italian aperitivo, but much, much softer, much sweeter, and less astringent, so it's easier on the palate. So, just going to pour those over my ice. So, you'll just be pouring the whole pouch. We've done it all in the pouch for you. So the next ingredient that I've got in this one is a little bit of Christmas spice syrup. So all I'm gonna do here is just take 10 milliliters of my, crystal, my Christmas spice syrup. So what we've done there is we've taken things like clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, all those Christmas spices and just put that in there. And we've made a syrup out of it, strained out the solids, and that gives us a, a sort of enriched simple or sugar syrup. Um, the next thing I'm going to be doing is putting in this, which is we've clarified the pineapple juice. So what we've done is we've taken pineapple juice, we've put it with agar agar, which is a, 
a kind of gelling agent, which is made from seed. And so we put it in that powdered form, we bring it up to temperature, it forms a gel, and then as it comes down to room temperature, the gel holds all the solids, but all the liquid is released. So all of your solid fibrous bits in it, and you get this lovely, lovely clear um, uh, pineapple juice as I've got here. So I just put this back into the pineapple bottle. Now, there is a cheap way to do this if you want to at home. Um, get a bottle of fresh pineapple juice from your supermarket, leave it to rest for about 36 hours in your fridge without touching it, and you'll find it all sediments out. And just to count off that top part of it, about two thirds of it, and you'll have a nice clear pineapple. And you can just do it that way. And you can see it's nice and clear still, so it hasn't got that cloudiness that you would usually expect from having pineapple juice in there. The last thing I've got is a little bit of clarified lime juice. So this is a lot harder to produce. So again, it is with agar agar, um, and this you absolutely have to, and just putting 10 millilitres of that in again. Um, so as I said before, this is with agar agar again, the lime juice, and what we've done is we just clarify all the solids out of it. You get this crystal clear, just slightly off-white colour uh, lime, uh, clarified lime juice. So it's got all the flavour, all the acidity, all of those essential oils in the lime juice, but it doesn't have any of the bitty bits. So it gives you these lovely clear drinks. So I'm just gonna stir that up quickly. So for your one, all you have to do is pour pouch number five over ice into a glass and then garnish with a nice bit of pineapple on top. And this drink is bittersweet, tropical, just got everything going. It is banging. Um, and yeah, cheers. Happy Christmas, guys. It's the first drink of the evening, so uh, let's all uh, have a great Christmas this year. And hope nothing more gets locked down and uh, have a great, great uh, festive season. Mm. Oh, lovely. So you'll get from that, that lovely flavour going all the way through. The pineapple, absolutely delicious. But it doesn't overpower. It's just right. And again with there, you'll get a little bit of tartness from the lime. You'll get a little bit of tartness uh, from that sort of, uh, you get that bite from the pineapple. Um, and a little bit of sweetness from the festive uh, Christmas uh, um, infused syrup. So, uh, so yeah, that's our first drink. That's our uh, Jingle Bird. So, as I said, yeah, this one it's sort of a tiki classic, the Jungle Bird. And the Jungle Bird originally would have this really dark blackstrap rum in it. So it's like uh, so it'd be a really dark Jamaican rum. It would then have uh, sort of like. 40 mil of that, it then have 15 mil of Campari, 15 mil of lime, uh, 10 mil of sugar syrup, and then have a whopping uh, great sort of about 100 mil of pineapple juice. And that was the original recipe. They now dial back the pineapple, so it's not too sweet. Um, but again, it was one of those drinks that kind of went out of favour and it's just hit massively globally at the moment. And you're finding it on lists all over the place. As tiki bartenders and tropical drink bartenders, we absolutely love it because there's very few drinks in the tropical drinks canon that involve these really bitter drinks like with Campari and such like. So uh, yeah, so enjoy your first drink. As I said, that is our Jingle Bird. Um, it had to be called a Jingle Bird at Christmas, didn't it? Um, yeah, it's just like a little tropical festive take on that uh, tropical classic. So yeah, so we're gonna be moving on to our second drink in a minute. Uh, Um, the second drink we're doing today is a uh, highball, a Japanese highball. So you can see right in front of me here, I've got a whole load of ingredients here. I'm just going to move those off to the side, out of the way for the moment, just to give myself a little bit more room. And we're going to come on to the next cocktail. So, as I said, this next cocktail is called Arigato Christmas. So, Arigato, it's hello. Hello Christmas. So we are beckoning in Christmas and uh, we're doing it Japanese style. Now, Japan is not a massive Christmas country, and but the flavours that are evoked with this kind of uh, cocktail is so on trend with Japanese highballs that I really wanted to include one in this. And I kind of wanted to just think about lovely sort of what would I have if I was drinking in Tokyo uh, at Christmas time, thinking of friends, and this was kind of where we got to. So for this drink, what we're gonna need is bottles number one and two, yeah? And then we are 
uh, sorry, one and two, and we are going to need a highball glass, so a nice tall glass. Um, now with this glass here, what I want to do first and foremost is just chill the glass quite a bit first. So I'm just going to put, for me, just some chilled ice in there, just to cool it down. Now if you've got freezer, you can put it in the freezer first and things like that. Um, but I just want to chill the glass down a little bit, just so that when I put this in, it's a, it's a long uh, fizzy drink, this one. And by chilling the glass first, it allows the fizz to stay in the soda water. So again, if you can, I've got a nice cold can of soda here. Um, always really useful to use. Uh, colder, colder the soda, the less more the gas stays in there. So it's really important. That. You can see that's frosting down nicely, uh, my glass. I'm just going to dispose of the ice and just get my glass back to empty again. But as you can see, I've got a nice chilled frosted glass now. And you'll quite often see us in bars doing that. It's a quick, easy way to chill a glass without having to put it in a freezer. Um, as I said, you will also need your um, soda water for this, and you'll also need the slices of dehydrated plum for this one as well. So, uh, so this drink here, um, as I said, it invokes Japan. And you can't have a highball in Japan without having a whiskey. And the whiskey that they use there is uh, from a big whiskey house called Suntory. And so these, this is a blend of three of the different Suntory whiskey houses. And uh, it's called Toki. Toki means time in Japan. And so when you're having this sort of drink, it's about uh, evoking this sense of Japanese sense of time and the time to mature whiskey and enjoy it. And it's a really accessible whiskey with lovely sort of apple flavors, green apple flavors and sort of citrus and stuff like that into it. But it has nice little sort of finish, peppery finish to it as well. So I really love it. I drink this neat uh, all the time. Get it at a lot of supermarkets now. It's about 30 odd pounds. So uh, really, really cracking thing. And so, as I said, this is with Suntory whiskey and uh, it's a blend from three different distilleries. So you've got Yamazaki uh, Distillery, you've got another one which is called Hakusu Distillery uh, and Chita Distillery. So these three distilleries are the benchmark for all of Suntory's main whiskies. And you find it in uh, Hibiki, their world beater, costs hundreds and hundreds of pounds a bottle. Uh, that sort of leads to very much a Yamazaki Hakusu blend rather than this is more the Hakushu and Cheetah blend with a little bit of Yamazaki. So it's just got a different flavor profile and it's more accessible. Um, so yeah, this is the base of our, our um, drink now. Now all I need you to do in essence is to pour bottles uh, one and two into your glass and then we can add the ice in. So what I'm gonna be doing is just showing you exactly what's in here. So I'm taking 20 milliliters of the Toffee whiskey first. Um, and so this forms the, uh, the base, it gives the heart of the drink. And uh, some people aren't massive on whiskey, so I've dialed back the amount of whiskey in here. Usually if I was doing a highball, I'd do 50, 60 mil of that and just soda and a little bit of acidity and it would be banging. Um, the next thing that I'm putting in is this here, which is Choya Umshu. And so Choya Umshu is a brand of Umshu, it's a really good one. Um, Umshu is uh, basically a liqueur made from the ume uh, plum. So uh, it's a yellow plum, it's a little bit sour, you can kind of see them all in the bottom there. So this one is matured for about a year and uh, aged for a year and it's just delicious. And uh, it's my favorite out of all of the uh, Umshu. You can get cheaper ones, but this one is an absolute Belter, it's about I don't know, 30 odd quid a bottle or something like that. Um, it is a liqueur, so it's lower ABV. You can have it cold, you can have it warm, you can have it over ice with tonic, uh, have it in a sour, like a whiskey sour. It's just so versatile and so much flavor. And it's got this lovely acidity produced by the citric acid uh, from the plums, but also there's a malic acid in there um, from the uh, shoshu, that is the base spirit that they make it from. And so you have this mix of malic and citric acid, so apples and citrus sort of uh, notes in it. And so I'm going to put 15 milliliters of that into the base of my glass. Now this is all in number one, uh, bottle number one. Um, so that's my Choya Bunshu. And uh, then the last thing I'm putting in is Kokoro Gin's uh, Cherry Blossom Liqueur or Sakura Liqueur. And so Sakura is a 
uh, ritual in Japan. Every March, April, uh, the cherry blossoms fall. And uh, it is an absolute quintessential bit of Japanese culture. So you see it in art and everything going back through the centuries. And it is absolutely stunning. And this one, yeah, it comes in 50 CL bottles and is just evokes cherry blossoms um, for me. And it's, uh, it's such an interesting Japanese flavor. So the last thing we're going to add into this, so you've got your 50 ml of spirits, which is your bottle number one there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a green tea cordial. So what we do is we steep green tea. Uh, we do it at about 80 degrees for about 10 minutes. Then we strain it all out. And then what we do is we let it chill and then we add in acidity to it. So we add in both citric acid and malic acid again, again in that umashu. So we're choosing acids that are in the fruit and the liqueur so that it complements and balances it but brings a sour note to it and so i'm going to use 30 ml of that and uh so this is your bottle number two so just pour that into your glass and that has your green tea cordial you'll actually taste it on your tongue it'll give a nice tart bite to you uh when you taste it um so you can see that in there now what i'm going to do next is i'm just going to add in my ice now i would just fill this with cubed ice what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a nice big rod of ice there, which I've got, um, and just give that a little stir around again, just to chill all my ingredients, yeah? So I'm getting the ice and the liquid inside and the glass all nice and cold before I put in my chilled soda water. So rather than popping a can every time, uh, what I am going to do is just use my soda stream here. So what I've done is I've kind of double pressurized this for soda stream. It's like the fizzier the better, uh, always with soda when you're doing this. So you can see there, nice and fizzy. And then all I'm gonna do is just pour that down the side of my ice into my drink. And it's about the same, it's about three, four ounces of soda water. So uh, not too much, um, but you can see there, if you look there, nicely fizzing away, yeah? And then all I'm gonna do is just give that a little soft stir to mix all the ingredients up. Pull it through a little bit, lift it all through. And then I'm just gonna take my dehydrated plum, oops, and pop that on top. And so there we have Arigato Christmas, or Hello Christmas. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's it's a welcome for me, this, and when you taste this, you'll get lovely, rich whiskey flavour, but it's dialed back with that plum and that cherry blossom, so you've got a really floral note to it as well. Oh my lord, this is my drink all over. It's like, I'll drink these all day long, and uh, it's the kind of drink I drink at home. So I make these cordials at home all the time, have a bottle in the fridge. And so if I've got a bottle of whiskey, I can just have my soda stream whiskey. I've always got, I don't need any other mixes for it. I just make my own uh, cordials. So um, yeah, if you are interested in making cordials and such like that, um, we can send you links and stuff like that on how we uh, make them. So yeah, this is a particularly lovely thing. And it's like the highball is one of those things in Japanese culture uh, that is just quintessential. And it sort of dates back to the 1950s and when businessmen will be drinking it, and it's gone through ebbs and flows of fashion, but at the moment, possibly one of the most fashionable cocktails out there is the Japanese highball. And there's a brilliant bar in America called Katana Kitten, and um, the guy who owns that's just brought out a really good book called The Art of the Japanese Cocktail, and highly recommend it, brilliant book. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is kind of, it's elegant, it's simple, but it just has those lovely tropical, Asian flavors that are just delicious. So this is a real palate cleanser. Um, so yeah, enjoy. So without much ado, we are going on to our third cocktail. So the third cocktail we've got today is a zombie cocktail. And so a lot of people sort of go, a zombie cocktail? So yeah, this is a cool drink. It's, I'll tell you a little bit about the history first before we make it. So this one's quite easy to do. So it's just pouch number six. 
um, and we're going to use crushed ice and then we're also going to be um, using another highball glass for this one. So, uh, so as I said, this one here we is it's it's like a really belter of a drink, and it gets its name from uh, the guy who created it back in the 1930s, and it was a guy called Don the Beach, and he basically had a bar called Beach Cones, and Don Beach Cones, and so this is one of these Californian uh, sort of hangouts where all the celebrities hung out and it was awesome and so you'd had everyone from charlie chaplin there through to all of the movie stars of the day <clears throat> and uh and politicians and all sorts it was a it was a super cool hangout and so don invented the pretty much invented tiki cocktails there was another guy trader vic and they kind of both bounced the ideas off each other stole each other's ideas but Don the Beach was kind of one of the pioneers of the tropical cocktail and tropical cocktail culture. And it's where we get all of these drinks and those lovely, fantastic mugs and all the rest of it. Um, and so one of the drinks he developed was a drink called a zombie. And what happened was he had a customer, really good friend of his, came into the bar and he was really hung over from the night before and he needed a drink to get him through the day and the meeting. So Don made this drink that was just loaded with booze. And uh, the guy came back in three, four days later and just said, Jesus, what did you give me the other day? I was like walking around like a zombie all day um, after having it. And so he sort of put it on his list and made it and created this drink that is so iconic now in the bar industry. And so, yeah, we wanted to do one of those. Now, the other great thing about a zombie is you can serve it hot. And so they do do a hot version of a zombie and say, so have it flaming and all the rest of it. A lot of theatre to it. And so quite often with zombies, you'll have flames of, uh, coming out the top and uh, overproof rum on fire on it and stuff like that. It's a very theatrical drink. So we kind of wanted to do that as well. But we wanted it wintry. So what we did is we thought, well, let's do, what's, what's more wintry than toasting marshmallows around your bonfire or your fire in the house? And so that sort of gave us the German idea. Let's do a toasted marshmallow zombie. So the first thing we did with this is we took a load of Caribbean rums. So we took, for instance, Plantation again. This is their original dark rum. We also took Balladen, which is a kind of rum-based uh, sort of liqueur that's got cinnamon, spice. And we've added extra cinnamon and clove into that as well. We also had Jamaica's Ray and Nephew overproof rum. This is like real rocket fuel up at 70% alcohol. Um, other things we added into it was a nut-free orgeat. So uh, we wanted it to be uh, allergen-free. So this is actually made from uh, uh, peach kernels. So it's completely, again, it's nut-free. So um, um, the only other thing in there is some tiki bitters as well. So, uh, so without much ado, I'm going to show you this drink. And so, what we need to do first and foremost with this is bash up some ice. So this is where that tea towel and cloth come in uh, that I spoke about earlier. So if you've got a uh, tea towel and a rolling pin, perfect. Watch your fingers when doing this, especially after having a couple of drinks. Always really important. I'm using this, which is called a Lewis bag. So this is, was, was designed for the industry to make crushed ice and so it's basically like a tea towel bag and uh, made of cotton or linen and you just put your ice into it like that. Pull the drawstring and then you just pull up. It's a dropped one. Um, so that just flattens all up and it gives me nice crushed ice. So as I said, watch your fingers doing this. Um, it's always a fun bit to do. So, uh, and so if I pour that out now, I will get hopefully a nice selection of crushed ice. Pop that down there. So as you can see, there's a nice bit of crushed ice. Now I want that all the way to the top. I've got a little bit I made earlier. Um, so when we do this, we want the ice all the way to the brim. So as you can see, I've got it right the way up to the top. Um, again, what happens, this is, as I said earlier, the more ice the better because it chills the drink down. It also makes it less slushy and uh, a little bit more easy to drink. So with this one, I'm just going to show you what's in there. So 
we have got some original dark. Now what I've done is I've infused marshmallows into this and it's given us a lovely, lovely sort of vanilla-y flavour to it. So I'm just going to add in 20 ml of that and then going to add in 10 ml of my overproof rum. So as I said, this is quite, quite strong but it has a real kind of Jamaican funk to it. And when we say funk, it's how they make their rums in Jamaica and they're really full on. They make these big pits, they put all the banana leaves and everything into it, ferment it up, stick it in the rum, help it ferment, it gives all these esters and these magical flavors erupt in Jamaican rums and that's kind of how they make it. Um, the next thing I'm gonna be doing is putting in a little bit of my falernum. So uh, without much ado, I'm just gonna get a little bit more of my plantation as well in there. So 15 mil of plantation. So this is all in your, uh, your little baggie of trips. So it's quite a strong cocktail this, so beware. Then we've got the velvet falernum, which is in there, uh, which we've added again, a little bit of Christmas spice to. Um, 15 mil of that. And that helps sweeten it a little bit as well. The next that's going in there is basically just about seven and a half mil. I know this is really quite accurate, but I've got a lovely little gradiated jigger here. So it tells me exactly how much it's designed for the cocktail industry so that we can do these exact measurements very easily. So I'm just gonna pop that in as well. And then the last thing I'm putting in here is, well, second from last is this, which is, a clementine and pomegranate sherbet. So what we do is we take pomegranates, take all the seeds, put it into sugar. Uh, we then zest in clementines, uh, let it all steep there uh, for about 24 hours. Um, we then add in the clementine juice um, and you get this lovely syrup. We then take that, we pasteurize it, and then we add in um, a, a blend of acids. So citric, malic, and tartaric. So the acids from citrus fruit, grapes, and apples, essentially. It's all naturally occurring acids. We add a bit in there, sour it up to the same pH as lime juice. And uh, that gives us this lovely uh, sort of festive pomegranate and uh, clementine cordial. So I'm gonna pop that in. And this is just all that's in that uh, pouch here. So we do all this together and then we, uh, it's how we batch up cocktails. So as you can see, making each individual cocktail can take a lot of time. So we actually do this in our bars. So the last thing in there is this, which is some tiki bitters. So this has all those sort of, a lot of Christmas spices in there. So there's clove, there's nutmeg, uh, cinnamon, um, uh, all sorts in there from it. And just gives you this really sort of spicy note to it as well. And uh, we use it a lot in tiki drinks. So that is called Vitamins Emmanuel Tukey Vitamins. So, uh, yeah, really tasty. So, that is in essence what is in your pouch. So, I'm just going to pour that over my crushed ice. There we go. Um, give that a little stir. Give it a swizzle. tiny bit more ice. Now the last thing I've got is our garnish which is the marshmallow. Now I don't advocate using fire but if you've got one at home a little torch like this is really good for it. If you've got a nice bonfire going even better but again all I do with this give a little toasting on the outside as you would toast the marshmallow and there we go, there's my garnish. And that is my toasted marshmallow zombie. And so, yeah, it's just, oh, got all that Christmassy smells. But packs a really good Jamaican rum punch. Oh my Lord, I'm loving that. It's like a Christmas bonfire in my mouth. Um, so yeah, that's our third drink. That is our toasted marshmallow zombie. And it's like, the zombies are strong drinks. So, this one has a kick, so uh, enjoy with this one. So uh, yeah, this is uh, the second from last drink. Um, and again, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the first two as well. I've tried to trick pick four completely different drinks as well for this. So you've got that Japanese highball, tropical zombie, spice bomb, all the rest of it. You've got that bittersweet uh, Campari laced uh, jingle bird uh, at the beginning. The next one is super tropical.
And so for the next drink, what we're doing is a uh, take on a classic Mexican cocktail, the margarita. So I'm just gonna pop that one out of the way. And without much ado, get on to our last drink. So just I'll reset with my bottles. So for this last drink, what we're going to be making is um, our Los Pasados. And Los Pasados is a festival just before Christmas in Mexico. So we've named it after that festival. And it's sort of in the run up to Christmas, uh, including Christmas Eve in Mexico. And it's about a week, two weeks of uh, festivities uh, for the saints. And uh, so, yeah, so we want to kind of think of how to do a Christmas version of this drink yet again. And so... Uh, we really wanted to do that and so the Los Posados, what I wanted to do is take all those things and the one thing I hadn't used was cranberry and so we've got some New England spiced cranberry bitters. Uh, this gives a real little cranberry note to the back end of the palate and a little bit of that festive flavour to it as well. Um, the other thing we've got is a um, uh, passion fruit and mango cordial. So for this drink what we're going to be using is bottles number three large bottle and bottle number four and so the other thing that might be quite useful on this one is just a little bit of water at the end as well just to give it a little bit more length as well the soda water if you've got a little bit of that left would be perfect um, so for this one we're going to need our cocktail shaker and some muscle power so uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you exactly what's in this drink first and then talk talk you through it so in bottle number one, what we have is, in essence, a um, uh, tequila. So Casadores uh, tequila, so, sorry, Cascabel tequila, um, which is 100% agave tequila. And uh, as I said, all tequilas are from Mexico. All tequilas are mezcals, but not all mezcals are tequila. So tequila is a region of Mexico, a bit like champagne. So if you think of Champagne uh, down near uh, Reims, you've got this whole region of fields and hills and valleys around uh, Reims, and uh, that is the Champagne region. Tequila has its own region. It's got the Altos Hills, or it's going right the way down to um, Jalisco for uh, the more lowlands and uh, sort of mid areas and stuff. But it's this area uh, that they grow the Blue Weber agave. So any uh, good tequila will say 100% agave, which basically means it's a stamp of uh, authenticity and quality. So a lot of them, if they don't have that, they're called a mixto and they're a little bit, they're made from a blend of lots of different um, uh, tequilas and they can even have cane spirit and stuff like that of agaves but have uh, uh, sugar cane spirit in there as well so always look for that thing 100% agave it gives a lovely herbaceous note to it so the first thing I'm going to do is put in to my cocktail shaker so this is what's in uh, bottle number three essentially and uh, what I'm going to be doing is putting in 35 millilitres of the tequila um, and then the other thing I'm using is this which is a yuzu liqueur this is Mary Brizard one um, we do make our own occasionally with this when we can't get hold of this we've had real supply issues with this over the last year so we make it using fresh yuzu fruit and yuzu fruit is super expensive it's like uh, it's a type of thick gnarly citrus fruit so lemon loads of pith on it and a really kind of tangerine grapefruit, pink grapefruit, yellow grapefruit, all of those flavors combined. So it's got a really unusual flavor profile. Um, so I'm just gonna use in that 15 milliliters of yuzu liqueur. Um, and again, as I said, yeah, I mean, a yuzu, single yuzu could cost you five pounds. So, uh, so yeah, compared to what a lime is 30p. So yeah, it's, it's, it's expensive by comparison. So um, the next thing we've got in there is 30 millilitres of our acid adjusted uh, mango and passion fruit cordial. So we basically steeped mangoes and passion fruit, fruit uh, pulp into um, uh, sugar 
made it into a syrup, pasteurised it, and then acidified it again with those acids I spoke about earlier. Tartaric, malic, and uh, citric. And that gives sort of a balance of flavours. None really overpower, but it gives really good crisp acidity to the drink. And this is in place of adding fresh lime juice to the drink, for instance. So uh, we do that, so we're sweetening and souring the drink at the same time with the cordial. So whereas beforehand you would usually have, uh, say, fresh lime juice in there, you would also have sugar syrup in there. What this does is allowed us to load the flavour and the acidity into a enriched acidified syrup, which is what a cordial is. Uh, that's the difference between a cordial is the acidity uh, to a syrup. So um, the last thing I'm going to be putting in here is a couple of things actually, sorry, uh, is a little bit of my spiced New England cranberry bitters. So again, this is from Bitterman's again there, so New England Cranberry Bitters. Um, and the last thing I'm putting in is a foamer. And so this is by the fabulous people who are called Ms. Betters Bitters Miraculous Foamer. And what this does is it takes place of egg white in a cocktail. And so we'd usually add an egg white into a cocktail in order to give it a really nice foam. And so when you have sour, whiskey sour, you'd have egg white in it, have a lovely foam in it, and that would give you this lovely layer on top, creamy layer mouthfeel of a silky palate. So I've added some ice into there. I'm just going to add in a little bit more ice. So if you can add over ice into your cocktail shakers, basically number three and four. That's it. Um, then what I'm going to do is give it a really damn good shake. So what you'll find in there is I've got this lovely shaken cocktail, nice and foamy. So when I pour it out now, it comes out almost cloudy. So you just see that there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just if you've got a little bit of soda left in your can, just put a tiniest bit in and it'll just make it foam a little bit more into your glass. So the last, thing, last garnish we've got here is our little stir crazy wafer. So the thing that I actually thought when I when we did these is they almost look like an ecclesiastical wafer. So uh, yeah, so we're blessing you at the same time. So uh, whichever your religion. But as you can see, there's our little wafer, and what we're going to do is just layer that on top, and just let it sit, and it will just blend in uh, after a little while. And uh, yeah, this is our um, Los Posados, and uh, yeah, it's a riff on a margarita essentially. And so the margarita is a type of daisy and uh, a daisy cocktail as were invented in the 30s, 1900s to 1920s and uh, they traveled south, they would usually have whiskey or gin as a base of a daisy or cognac and so when they went down to Mexico they substituted the gin or vodka uh, or rum uh, or uh, cognac for tequila and so in Mexico the word for daisy is margarita. So uh, it's the name of the flower. So uh, as you can see, you've just got the little wafer on the top there and ready to drink. And, and it's just jam packed full of tropical baba boom. And uh, yeah, it's like, we wanted to do a tropical masterclass for Christmas because I think we all need it. <laughs> And especially the way things are going again, it's like hopefully uh, we can all get on holidays and go to those tropical islands again and get out and do stuff. Um, it's I'm looking forward to doing that in the new year, hopefully is getting away somewhere nice and hot and warm, but hopefully over Christmas we've given you a little taste of it. Um, and yeah, so this is our last cocktail. This is our Los Posados. I hope you enjoyed the drinks. Uh, uh, today. Thank you so much for choosing Stir Crazy. It's been an absolute blast. We've had another sort of crazy year of it this year with everything. 
and getting our bars open, which has been fantastic. So thank you again for choosing Stir Crazy. Enjoy Christmas, have a fantastic time and a phenomenal new year. And thank you again. Take care. Happy Christmas.